that's Rusty and welcome to part three of our three part series with the uh, upgraded plasma cutter on my table which is the Thermacut SD55. Now as you've just seen there we just made a cut and this is a a windmill fan blade for a friend's ornamental garden windmill and the cut you saw was quite quick the settings I'm using are what they call cut charts from the manual and I'm finding that I can go a little bit quicker because I'm running the amps a little bit higher and I'm not having that duty cycle issue. So let me take you to the computer. I just want to show you what the manual says about the cut charts. In the previous video you saw I installed the machine torch and made that mounting plate with the, with the blocks and I'm really pleased with that. And the consumables that I have um, I've got what they call fine cut consumables, which are a nozzle with a quite a small hole in and you get to turn the amps down a little bit. And then you can step this thing up, you can cut with 45 amps, you can turn it up to 55 amps, and at 55 amps I can cut 19 mil uh, metal. Okay, so let me just show you those cut settings and I'll show you how we got that set up. Pretty much all plasma cutters these days come with a cut chart and basically it's a reference guide to tell you uh, for the thickness of the material you're cutting, what amps to use, what cut height to use, um, and the voltage, the arc voltage which you use for your torch height control. Now, with the thermocut, the cut charts are actually in the uh, machine torch or the hand torch manual. So, if I just don't want to bore you with all this, if I just scroll down here, uh, if you look at section four. Section 4 talk, gives you some information about how to set it up. Now what it's got here is it's got a now the mechanized cutting chart means it's the machine torch on the machine running around. So we've got a series of cut charts for 45 amp, 55, 65, 75, all the way up to 105 amps. So depending on the machine, this cut chart is relevant for all the machines. Now, my, as you know, this, the SD55 goes from 30 to 55 amps. So I'm tending to use the 45 or 55 amp cut chart. And we also have a, uh, another cut chart for fine cut material. And that's more to do with cutting really thin material. So let me show you what we're going to be, what I reference when I look for the, the right cutting heights and speeds for the amps I'm using for the material that I'm cutting. So what I've done is I've actually taken a copy of the 45 amp and the 55 amp um, cut charts and kept them separately because it's just easier to reference and trying to scroll through the book all the time. So if I open up this 45 amp chart, now I'm using a shielded configuration. So this rep this means i'm going to have the cutter set at 45 amps and i can cut mild steel stainless steel or aluminium at 45 amps in the range of half a mil up to six mil of mild steel half a mil to six mil of stainless or one mil to six mil of aluminium um, i'm going to be cutting out a um, a bladed windmill fan for a uh, a friend's garden ornament and it'll be cut out of three mil mild steel so here's three mil mild steel so it tells us that the torch to machine distance is 1.5 millimeters the initial pierce height is 3.8 millimeters now we need 0.4 of a second of pierce delay so that's the time from the torch piercing the material to actually dropping down to the cut height and traveling at this speed now there's two speeds in this in the chart there's a recommended speed and a maximum speed. Um, the maximum speed is the cut quality won't be as good, and I tend to use the best quality settings at a cut speed of 3,850 millimeters a minute. And I also get a arc voltage value. So that means that with this particular configuration of torch, the shield, the electrode, um, this is the cutting nozzle, and I'm using the ohmic sensor and this shielded cover. Approximately 133 amps is the arc voltage measured across the gap while it's cutting this material. I also get told that my kerf width is 1.5 millimeters. Now, the kerf width is important because that is basically the width of your 
plasma beam coming out of through this nozzle. And you need to factor that in when you set up your cutting uh, parameters because you don't, if you don't want to make something, so when you cut something, you want it to size. If you ha didn't have the kerf width set correctly, you, your item could be undersized or oversized. I mean, for most things, it probably doesn't matter. But if you're making something that's a, you know, needs to be cut exact, you need to make sure you set the, the, the kerf correctly. All right, so I'm going to be cutting three mil mild steel, so I can use 45 amps. Let me just show you something here. If we go to the 55 amp cut, chart now mild steel on 55 amps which means the cutters turn flat out i can cut from 2 mil to 25 mil and up to 16 mil i can use the normal pierce um, height otherwise i've got to do an edge start so if we go back to 3 mil all of a sudden if i'm going to run at 55 amps the cut height of 1.5 mil and the pierce height of 3.8 is the same the pierce delay is a little bit, uh, sorry, the pierce delay is quicker because you've got more amps. And as you can see here, the cut speed has gone from 38.50 to 45.78. Now the amps have changed because the nozzle has changed. However, the kerf width is the same. So that's what the cut chart's designed to tell you. And, and these are guides. I found the voltages can be a little bit off. Um, now, one other thing, we have also a fine cut consumable option. Now, the fine cut just means it's got a different nozzle. This 11845, that's a different nozzle. And down here, this shielded, the, the shield here is a different size to the um, non fine cut. But, and what it gives me is it gives me values for 0.5 of a mil up to 4 mil of mild steel, 0.5 of a mil to 4 mil for stainless, but I do not have a cut chart in, in the fine cut consumables for aluminium. I also get two voltage settings. So if I'm cutting at four, half a mil up to 0.8 of a mil mild steel, I'm using 40 amps. And anything from one mil up to four mil, I use 45 amps. Again, Obviously, the hole in the nozzle is different, my kerf width is different, and the voltage is different. And that's a characteristic of the, of the um, nozzle and shield assembly. So the other thing I was going to show you was at 1.5 mil mild steel, it wants me to do 6,400 millimetres a minute. Now, I don't, like to, I don't run my table that fast. So I am using, not to confuse the heck out of you, what I'm using is a, I've gone away from these cut charts if I use the fine cut, and I'm using Hypertherm's low speed fine cut option. And I'll just show you what that looks like. Now this cut chart is actually a Hypertherm uh, cut chart rather than a Thermocut. And what it gives me, okay, these part numbers are different because this is the Hypertherm part numbers, not the Thermocut, but they are same consumables. So what I've got down here is if I'm going to cut 0.5 of a mil to 0.8 of a mil, I can use 30 amps. So it's slow, so it's going low. It's only doing 3,800 millimeters a minute. If I'm cutting one and 1.5 mil, I go to 40. And if I go two mil to four mil, I use 45 amps. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to be cutting some three mil, and I'm going to be using the fine cut consumable. So I'm at three millimeters, I've got 45 amps. It's telling me to use 1.5 mil cut height, 2.25 millimeter pierce height. It wants me to use 0.5 of a second pierce delay and a cut speed of 2,750 millimeters a minute. And it wants a voltage of 78 and a kerf width of 1.3. So now we're going to cut that Windmill, let me show you how I've got it set up. Okay, so I've opened up my plasm, which is the cutting software I'm going to be using, and I've drilled down to this windmill fan that I want to use, and 
I need to make sure the kerf width is correct, 1.3, which is dialed in here, 1.3 mil, which is the width of it. And if I choose OK, I now need to come over here to my cut settings. And what I've already done is I've already got some cut settings in here. So if I scroll down here, anything that's got TC is thermocut. And I've got some, oh, oh, sorry, where are we? Right. TC is thermocut. FC stands for fine cut, consumable. So I want 3 mil, not 16 gauge. So 3 mil, fine cut, 45 amp, 1.3 mil curve. So let's choose that one. Now remember the number before, 2750? Now that's the cut speed I'm using with these fine cut consumables. The second cut speed is 60% of the cutting speed. And what the idea of that is, when you're cutting a circle or a small hole, it slows down to um, help cut the circle without making the circle having the sides being bevel. All right, cut height is 1.5, as you saw from the chart. Pierce height's 2.25. The pierce delay is 500 milliseconds or half a second. I've got this floating height set to 25 millimeters. What that means is once it's pierced and cut one item, when it goes to the next one, it actually lifts up, the torch lifts up 25 mil, moves over, comes down and cuts it. Now, um, we saw 78 volts. What I'm using is zero volts in here. Now, zero volts represents the auto mode for the software and the arc voltage is displayed up here and sometimes it can be exactly what the chart says other times it can be off so i tend to cut it at zero volts which is auto and then record the value i see up here on the cutting chart and compare the two and then i will change the value from zero to whatever i saw up here but at this time this is what i've got set so this is the settings we're going to use and we're going to cut out this this uh, windmill blade to go on the ornamental garden windmill. Now these are the consumables for the machine torch. This electrode is common to both the fine cut and the ordinary nozzles. This is the swirl ring. Again, it's common. If I'm using the ordinary cutting settings, this is a f the 45 and 55 amp is the same nozzle. This is the shield. That's the shield that goes, screws on the outside of the end of the machine torch. And over here, this is the fine cut consumable, slightly smaller hole, a like different shape. This is the shield for the fine cut consumable. They're slightly different. If I just put those two together, you'll see they're slightly different. And the shape of the nozzle is slightly different as well. So you can't get them mixed up. And then you just buy these to suit whether you're cutting 45, 55, 65, right up to 105 amp because these are all the same sort of shape. It's just the hole in the, uh, in the end. So that's what the various consumables look like when I talk about fine cut and I guess you call them ordinary consumables. Now here on the front panel of the um, SD55, you can see the adjustment knob here which allows me to turn the amps I can go all the way down to 30 and I can slowly turn it up to uh, 55 is the limit so that previous cut you saw we were doing it at 45 amps as per the cut chart and yeah it once once it's uh, once we dial in the amps we're pretty well cutting the same size material we set and forget now this is the omic sensor and this shield shielded cap fits around the nozzle and there's a metal band and that little finger there rests up against that brass shield and this is my omic sensor wire that goes back to the my plasm software so when you bring the torch down and it touches the material you get a, what they call a material detection error and that actually tells me that the torch is touching the metal so when i do the Z axis equals zero command, it, the torch now knows where the material is in relation to its 
travel of the torch. So that's how the ohmic sensor works, and it's really, really good. And once you set it up, then the, the subsequent cuts of each piece that you're cutting out, the torch comes down, finds the metal, and then retraces back to the pierce height. So that's a really good way of controlling your material detection. Now this is that windmill fan that I've just cut on the table. This is the top side, which you'd expect to be quite clean. Um, I'll just turn it over and show you the underside. This is straight off the table. I haven't cleaned it at all. Now, this edge, there is almost no, or well, along this edge here, there's no dross, as they call it, which is the, the molten slag that comes off from the process. So a good indication of a clean cut has to do with your amps, the torch height control working correctly, and the cut speed. So as I said, from the cut chart, you can see what we had it dialed into. And yeah, I'm really pleased with this new plasma cutter and I'm really pleased with the cut quality that I'm seeing from it. Well that's the end of this three-part video series on the upgrade to the plasma table with the new Thermacut SD55 plasma cutter. Uh, just a couple of quick shout outs. Uh, James from Thermacut Australia um, who, was, who I spoke to initially and we organised to get the, uh, the cutter and to my friend Daniel from Mark's Automation and Design who actually is an agent for Thermocut in New South Wales now and I now order all my uh, consumables and that through him and, and he's been really helpful. We've had quite a few chats about just tweaking the settings to get it right and as you saw in those cut charts, they are a guide. You do need to fine tune a few things as, as we've done on our table. So if you like the video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, the subscribe button is down here. And if you haven't seen the other videos, I'll put a link up here to the playlist. If there's something you didn't like about the video and you do give it a thumbs down, I'd appreciate you putting in the comments what it was you didn't like, because I'm always trying to make you know, better content uh, on my videos. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a link in the description below to buy me a coffee. The support I get is very much appreciated. So look out for videos in the future where we're going to be making more things on the table. Uh, we've got a few little projects that we've been working on uh, from the regular market days I go to and some of those I'll, I'll, I'll bring in a, in a future episode. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.